In this lesson, we will take a look how we can export our animation to a video file and store it on our hard disk. Before we export our video file, it is important that we determine the duration of our video. Actually, you see that the work area is set to 3 seconds, but I want my final animation video to be about 5 seconds long, so I have to change the in and the out point of my work area. Let's drag our time indicator to 5 seconds. And now let's drag out the out point of our work area. You can hold down shift and it will snap in place right at your time indicator. Now this determines that the export will be really 5 seconds long and After Effects will export everything between the in and the out point of our work area. Now let's take a look what options we have got to export videos in After Effects. Come up here to Composition and here you have two options. The first option is Add to Adobe Media Encoder Queue. With this option you can open up the Adobe Media Encoder app and this app is included in the Creative Cloud. So if you have a Creative Cloud then you also have the Adobe Media Encoder. And this is an external app that was designed specially to encode and export video files. The second option, Add to Render Queue, is the internal renderer that is included in After Effects. We will take a look at both options now and I want to start with the Adobe Media Encoder because I think it's the little bit more easy one. Before we start exporting our video, let me mention that I do not want to go into too much details about video encoding. I do not want to go through all the settings and all the possibilities and all the different codecs that are available and what they are good for, because this is actually not the content of our course here. But I want to give you a recommendation if you really want to learn video encoding and if you really want to get details about all the possibilities and all the settings that you have, then you should watch this tutorial it is called uh, How Codecs Work and it is from David Kong and available on Vimeo for free. I will post the link in the description of this lesson. So if you want to learn everything about video codecs, how they work and what all the settings do and what an influence they have on the outcome of your export, then please take this 43 minutes and watch this tutorial. It's really awesome. But actually, the Adobe Media Encoder enables us to export videos even without knowing too much about video codecs. So let's take a look at that. Let's make sure that our main composition is active. Let's come up here to our Composition tab and let's select Add to Adobe Media Encoder Queue. Now Adobe will launch the Media Encoder. And now you see we have got our Adobe Media Encoder layout here and you also see that our main composition was already added to our render queue here. Please don't be confused that my Adobe Media Encoder is installed in German. I will try to explain all the important expressions in English. The easiest way to export a certain video format with the Adobe Media Encoder is to use one of the presets. If you come down here to the presets here, you see that there are really a lot of presets and if I close this then you see we have something for image sequences, we have broadcast, cinema, DVD and Blu-ray, then some mobile devices, some camera standards, some options for only exporting audio and additional options and there is also an option specially designed for web videos. If you open these up then you see in each of these we have a bunch of different options. Here you can export uh, JPEG sequences for example or PNG sequences with different settings and everything. Then if you come into the broadcast tab here you have some standards for broadcasting. Some of them are really high quality like this DNX HD and you see here you have a bunch of different options and you can open up all these options and take a look at the different options and settings that are available and you can also take a look what these settings mean. So here you see this is uh, 60 frames per second with 440 mbits per second so this is a really high quality codec and here you can choose whatever you need for your production. In my case I want to export a simple H.264 codec for web video. 
Therefore, I go to my web video settings and here you see I have some presets for Facebook, for Twitter, Vimeo and YouTube. And in my case, I just want to use the YouTube standard, the YouTube 1080p HD standard. Now, just grab your preset and drag it right over the preset that is already visible here and let your mouse go. And then you see the Adobe Media Encoder will apply these settings. If this is all you want to do, just export a standard preset setting, then now you can click on this location, specify a folder wherever you want to export your video to, and you are good to go. Please be aware that the Adobe Media Encoder, as a standard, will create a new folder right next to the location where your After Effects project is saved, and this will be the standard location where all your renders will be stored. So if you want to use another location, then you have to specify it manually. In my case, I do not need to specify this manually. And in my case, I just want to overwrite my first render test here. So I select this and click save. And now it will ask me whether I want to overwrite it. And I say yes. If you want to export another video format, for example, you also want to have a smaller Twitter version. So I can come in here and say I want to export it as a Twitter 720 HD file, then I could now add it below this first setting. You see that now my cursor here has this little plus, and if I let this go, then I have my second option here, and now I can specify the second file. Again, I will overwrite this one. Click Save. Yes. And now if I want to export my videos, I simply have to click this little green arrow. So let's do that and let's take a look. I think that these renders should work quite fast because our animation is short and it's not too complicated. And you see now these two video files are rendering quite fast. Okay, the render is finished. So this is the really fast and easy method of using these presets. If you want to create your own presets or if you want to change the settings, so let's again apply a new preset here. For example, let's take this YouTube 720p HD here and add it to our main composition again. If you want to change anything here, you can do this, of course. So you can create your completely individual uh, setting. Therefore, you can either choose in this drop down menu, you could choose whatever codec that you want to use. You can also change your presets right here, but you see that this list uh, is very long and you have all the settings that are right here, also here in this window. And here it's a little bit better organized. So I would recommend to use this window. But if you want to change the settings themselves, then you can just click on here on the name of your preset and then the Adobe Media Encoder will open up its settings. First of all, you see we have a preview here. So now I can take this small time indicator and scroll through my animation and can create a small preview. You also see that my work area is also visible here. So I could change the export or the length of my export here too. And you can choose here to export the whole composition. You can choose to export only the work area and you also can define a custom area to export. In my case, I want to export the work area, so I will choose work area. Then let's take a look here. You see that we have the video format and you can always change this by using these drop down menus. As I said, I do not want to go into too much details here. I do not want to talk about all these options. Uh, you could, of course, also change the presets right here. If you click on this name, then our Explorer will open up and you can specify your location and the name of the file. And here you see you have kind of uh, overview about the actual settings. And then in these tabs, you can change all the settings that are important. So if you finished the changes, then you can save the preset by simply clicking here. If I now click here, then it will display an error message because I didn't do any changes. But if I come in here to my video settings and let's say I want to change the resolution maybe to something strange like, I don't know, 1400. It's not actually a video standard resolution, but just as an example, then I come in here and can save it. I could now add a new name here, or I could specify a name, and then this will be added to my drop down menu and to my presets in the Adobe Media Encoder. So I will cancel this for now because I do not want to save this, and I will cancel the settings also. So this is how you can export your videos using the Adobe Media Encoder.
Now let's close the Adobe Media Encoder and let's take a look at the options in Adobe After Effects. Therefore again let's choose our main composition, let's move up here to composition and let's choose Add to Render Queue. Now After Effects will open our Render Queue and it will add our main composition to the Render Queue. You see we have some different settings here. So the first settings here are the render settings. In the render settings you can specify whether you want a high quality best settings, whether you want to use the current settings that you have in your project like the resolution and everything that you specified right in the project. You could choose between some other settings like draft settings. These are preview settings that render a little bit faster. And you can of course also enter these settings and take a look what else you can change here. So first of all we have the quality and you see that we have best draft and wireframe. Wireframe is especially important if you are working with 3D. If you want to render a final video then you always want to use the best option here. If you want to render a preview then you could also choose a draft. This will render a bit faster then. The same applies for the resolution. If you want to render a final video, you always should use full resolution. But you can also say, I want to quickly render out a half resolution video preview. Then you can change the resolution right here. You do not need to change anything from the disk cache. So just leave this on read only. You do not have to change anything right here. These are some specific settings that you probably won't use that often. So I will leave them for now. In the options down here you could specify a few options whether the frame blending is active or whether the motion blur should be active on the layers where you specified it. We didn't talk about frame blending yet but we did talk about motion blur. So if you want to render a quick preview you could turn the motion blur off here even if it's activated in your composition then you can say but I want to just use a draft quality with a half resolution and I want to turn the motion blur off and then you only render a very fast preview that will render of course faster than the full settings and create a quick preview. But in our case we want to export a video for our YouTube channel so we will leave this all active. So to make sure that I didn't change anything here, I just will select best settings here, uh, the preset here. Now we can take a look at the output module. By the way, you can also expand these and take a look at the settings that you have set here. Let's make this, let's close this again. And let's take a look at the output module. In the output module, you can specify a video codec. So you can also choose some presets here. And you see that we have only uh, very few presets compared to the Adobe Media Encoders. So you really have to set up your export settings manually here. And you can do this by simply clicking on lossless. And then you see all the options available. First of all, you can specify a format. Right now it's set to AVI. Uh, you see that there is actually no H.264 codec available in the Adobe Render Queue. So most of the times I use QuickTime because QuickTime also has some options. And if you want to specify a certain codec using the QuickTime container, then you come down here and click Format Options. And now you can choose a video codec. And here you see that QuickTime offers a lot of different codecs. So here you see it's the H.264 standard. We also can render in DNX HD, which is a very good and very high quality broadcast or archive video codec. So let's choose the H.264. Then you can change the quality here with this slider. And of course, the higher the quality, the slower the render. So if you want to render out a final video, then I would recommend to set this to a higher value. You do not need to change these advanced settings here. These are also very specific. You could limit the data rate if you want to control the size of your final video. But for these settings, the 1000 kilobits would be probably way too low. So the quality would not be that good. So I will not limit my rate. Now with our video codec selected, I can press OK. Then you have some additional options. You could choose which channel you want to render. You can choose RGB. You can also choose Alpha. If you, for example, want to export a video with a transparent background, you see that this is now grayed out. So you cannot render RGB channel and Alpha channel in one file using the H.264 codec. But for example, if I change this now, so if I do not use the 
H264, but I do use the PNG codec. Let's click OK here. Then you see that now I can choose RGB and alpha because PNG does support alpha channels. So now you could render out something with a transparent background in one video file. Then you can of course also change the color settings, but you see here there's only one setting available, the others are all grayed out. And to be honest, I've never used this. I never changed the color settings. I always used this standard setting here. And then you also can specify whether you want to have a straight alpha channel or a pre-multiplied alpha channel. You also have the option here to resize your video. So if you do not want to use the same size as your composition, then you can resize it here. You can specify a resolution by typing in some values and you can also choose one of these presets. These are actually exactly the same presets that are available when you create a composition. You also have the option to use cropping. You can activate this and then you can type in a value. I think this is in pixels, whether you want to crop it on top, left, bottom or right. Uh, to be honest, I've never used this option. And as a last option, you have the audio output option. In our case, we have no audio included, so we could turn this off. You can change between automatic audio off and audio output on, depending whether you want to render your video with audio included or not. And then of course you also have these settings specifying a frequency, a bit rate and the channel settings here. And the last option that you have for the audio rendering is these format options here. You can choose whether the audio option should be compressed in a certain uh, codec or whether it should be added uncompressed. So let's click OK here because we have no audio. It really doesn't matter. And you see you also have the option to add some color management here. But I do not want to go into any details because we actually do not need this because we didn't work or didn't talk about color management to this point. So with all these settings applied, we can now press OK and we can close these settings now. And then we can come to our output too. And now we can specify a location and a file name. So simply click on the name here and then the Explorer will be opened. And be aware that After Effects will not create a certain location. So not like Adobe Media Encoder, which will create a folder right beside your actual After Effects uh, project. After Effects does not do that. So you have to specify the folder wherever you want to render out or save your video file. Now you can put in a name here like project 01 final, click OK. And now if we are finished with our setup, then we can click the render button and After Effects will render out our video. You see that we have a preview going on in our composition window and you also see that we have this bar here showing the progress of our render. Okay, so this was the last lesson of our first After Effects project. I think this is a good occasion to thank all of you who are part and take part in our course. I hope that you have fun. I hope that you already learned something useful. In the next part of this course, we will do some creative work. We will do some experimenting with some effects and create some cool abstract designs.